on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Verse 16, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Mm -mm -mm. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Don't have time to deal with it, but the more correct translation from the Greek would be proclaimed to us a way of salvation. A is in one of multiple. Verse 18, this she did for many days, but Paul greatly annoyed. Somebody say he was, he was annoyed. No, don't say that. He, he, was, he was annoyed. This, 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 hallelujah. He was highly vexed. Thank you, first lady. He was high. He uh, Amen. Get you one of them, a good wife. Amen. Greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. One to continue as we work through Acts through this, yet working on our theme, spirit filled, spirit led and spirit empowered. If we are truly going to be spirit-led, if we're going to truly be spirit-led, we must accept that obeying the direction of the Holy Spirit will mean not doing what we want to do. I don't know if you heard me say that. Uh, if we're truly going to be spirit-led, we must accept that obeying the direction of the Holy Spirit will mean not doing what we want to do. Amen. I'm not only referring to how we react to things and people. Amen. You know, we're, we're good for that one. Woo, child, I was finna tell them off, but woo, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Woo, girl, 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 you don't even understand. Bruh, he was about to catch it. No, 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 I'm not just talking about the Holy Ghost leading you not to pop off on somebody. Tell somebody, but he will do that too. He will, he will. Mm, he will. Somebody say he will, because you know, some of y'all, some of us need to be shouting because we thank God he did. And, and the truth of the matter is the folk who, 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 some other folk need to tell God, thank you that we didn't pop off. Lord have mercy. I mean, I'm not only talking about that, but I'm, 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 let, me, let me keep going. But not only how you react to things and people, but being led by the Holy Spirit also may mean changes in what you pursue. Uh-oh. Changes in the career you choose to pursue. Changes in the jobs you decide to take. Changes in the places you want to go. Changes in the overall path you believe you should pursue. We cannot discuss Acts chapter 16 without the context of verses 6 through 10. And Paul and Silas's Macedonian call. We didn't read it for sake of time, but take note of it and we'll just highlight it. Uh, in verses 6 through 10, uh, we find out that uh, Paul and Silas, they had visited all the churches from Paul's first missionary journey. And they started to head northward toward Asia. 
Remember, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. He's taking the gospel to people who are not Jews. He's following the direction and leading of God. He's going hard for the gospel like he went hard for purifying uh, Judaism. So he's doing what makes sense. He's doing. He's been on one missionary journey. He has gone back to visit all the churches that he's helped preach out. And so he's following something that makes good sense. And his plan is to go northward into Asia. But in verses 6 through 10... We find out that even though he's headed north towards Asia, he was forbidden by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost forbid him. That's what they even say. It said in verse number six, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Hmm. The same Holy Spirit that they were baptized and filled with which empowered them to do great ministry and gave them their kingdom assignment, the same Holy Spirit equally pushes us out of our comfort zone and pulls us back from pursuits we would follow in order to fulfill our kingdom assignment. Let me say that again. Uh, the same Holy Ghost that we say we are filled with and we are led by will both push you out of your comfort zone and pull us back from things we said we were going to follow. That's right. Let me help you. If you are not having experiences of both frequently being pushed to do what you may not desire, and being pulled from what you might desire to do. If you're not having experience of both of those, we question, are you really Uh spirit-led? All right, I knew that was going to be a little hard. Um, The reality is uh, uh, a lot of us have no problem. Well, I'm not saying no problem. We have less problem being pushed out of comfort zone then we have been pulled back from things we would desire. Right, right, right. Amen. Paul and Silas are forbidden by the Holy Spirit to do something that, number one, to them seemed right, and number two, seemed to fulfill their assignment. I would argue that not, oh, Lord have mercy, that not enough of us are fully being spirit-led. Amen. Because being spirit-led is like a coin has both a head and a tail side. If you ever have a coin that has two heads or two tails, it's deformed. The coins that are correct have both heads and tails. Work with me. And because it has both heads and tails, it is equally possible that if you flip them, it will come to one or the other. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, the head side might be uh, the idea of you being pushed out of your comfort zone. The tail side where you being pulled back from what you desire. So if you're really being spirit led, you should have experiences of both being pushed out of what's comfortable, but also being pulled back from what you thought was the right thing to do. Lord have mercy. All right. I want to make me work a little harder today Ah, because the Holy Ghost, he, he not only pushes you to do what you normally would not, but he also pulls you back from what you would normally do. And the challenge for all for many of us is we would prefer if the Holy Ghost is going to make us do something. We prefer one over the other. If the Holy Ghost is going, if it really goes, we're going to work on me. I either want you to work on me and get me out of my comfort zone. Or I want you to work on me and pull me back from what I desire. Because one of them I can learn to accept and I can make it normal. 
And I can learn to become comfortable with that way of movement. But if I have to experience both, that means you're going to leave me in a place of being uncomfortable if I'm calling myself being spirit led. Talk, Davis. So, so that, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. We, we've been comfortable so long that when the Holy Ghost begins to push us out of our comfort zone, we're like, okay, this is what he does. And that's good. Okay, that's cool. I get accustomed to that. But then when we start to become comfortable doing new things, we don't hear the Holy Ghost trying to say, look, pull back. Don't pursue that because that's not what's right in this moment. Paul and Silas are forbidden to go to Asia. And Paul has a vision of a man calling him to come to Macedonia. <sighs> Being spirit led will require you to accept assignments that you may not have have expected that's being spirit led will require you to accept some things that you didn't expect so after Paul has the vision to go to Macedonia in good spirit led fashion Paul changes direction. Look down your row and ask him, have you changed? Have you changed? Have you changed? This, this, this. He, he, he heads to Macedonia. And in Macedonia is where our text takes place today. Here's some things we have to remember as I hurry up and try to get to second base. The Holy Spirit fills us for purpose. Thank God for the worship team. And the Holy Spirit leads us for purpose. Thank God for the worship team. And the Holy Spirit empowers us for purpose. The evidence is speaking in tongues, having power, manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. But the purpose is for fulfillment of assignments in the earth. All right, let me, let me, let, let me keep mashing these potatoes. I've cut them up, but let me mash them. Because that's... See, see, the thing of it is, we, we, we've got people that have mixed perspectives with regard to this work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost will be a guide. The Holy Ghost will teach you. But the Holy Ghost is given to the believers for fulfillment of purpose and assignments. There is evidence of power. There's evidence of speaking in tongues. There's evidence of manifestation of gifts and fruit. But the purpose is to fulfill your assignment wherever you are assigned. Let me help you here. You might be assigned to the educational system. You still need to be spirit filled, spirit led and spirit empowered in that system. You might be assigned to the justice system. You yet have to be spirit filled, spirit led and spirit empowered in that system. You might be assigned to the economic system. You might be assigned to the medical system. You might be assigned to a hiring HR system. But whatever system you are assigned to, you yet need to be Holy Spirit filled, spirit led and spirit empowered. And the reality is that you, if you are spirit filled, to be really spirit filled means you can function well in any system you are assigned to. I don't have no help in here. All right, let, me, let me cut them up a little bit more before we mash them because y'all still look at me like I'm crazy. This, this is the challenge that comes. Paul and Silas are sent on assignment to Macedonia and our text begins to take place. And even though they are in the, the area, the region known as um, of Macedonia, our text specifically takes place in the city known as Philippi. It is the city from which Paul will write the book of Philippians to. 
that's free. Uh, the Philippian book of the Bible is the writing of the letters to the people at the church of Philippi. So here he is in Philippi, an old, well-known city that was known for mining silver and gold. It was considered to be a leading city of Macedonia. There's a reason why Paul and Silas are assigned to go to Philippi in the, the region of Macedonia. They are assigned to go here first and foremost to interact with Lydia, the seller of purple, and a demon-possessed girl. Let me help you. The reason for anything God assigns and desires is always connected to people. I'm trying to help somebody today. You are not operating in your assignment just for structures and systems. You operate in your assignment through structures and systems, but yet for the benefit of people. Paul... Silas are sent to, uh, to Philippi in Macedonia. And the first person they run into is this woman by the name of Lydia. She's a prominent woman. The Bible calls her a worshiper of God. This is a Gentile nomenclature. So she's not a Jew. She's a Gentile who worships and honors the God of that, 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 the, the God of all the most high God. She worships God, but she does not know about Christ. I see something here. I got to hurry up and tiptoe through this. Uh, uh, the pro a problem, not the a problem in today's church, today's black church. Um, yeah, yeah. A problem in today's black church is we act as if, Lord have mercy, the gospel is only beneficial to folk who are down and out. I come to help you. Even people of influence and prominence need Jesus. Just because you got some coins don't mean you don't need Jesus. Because you can be paid on your way to hell. I don't have nobody talking to me in here. And, 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 and the church has to come to understand this. If we're fulfilling our assignment, we just might also be assigned to some people of influence and prominence. Who she she and and and, and don't, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me with that tone. Y'all know black churches, we good for this. When it comes time to do outreach or do witnessing, we go to the projects. We go to the hood because we want to tell them you need Jesus so your life will be better. But we don't go to folk in them seduty neighborhoods and tell them they yet need Jesus too. The truth of the matter is, every tell somebody everybody, everybody. Jesus says from the guttermost to the uttermost. Everybody needs Jesus. The Bible says that Paul, let me hurry up. Paul and his crew, uh, his ministry team, they enter Philippi. And as Paul's custom, Paul would try to go to the synagogue first because he cared about his people. The fact that Paul goes to the riverside where women are praying is indicative of the fact that there must not be a synagogue in Philippi. This must mean there are not enough Jews to have built one. But also it could mean that you had to have at least 10 Jewish men at a time to officially have a service in the synagogue. So Paul enters, the, enters Philippi and he's trying to find where are some people who are acknowledging God who I need to tell them about Christ. And he finds out they're down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. All right. They're down by the riverside and they're praying. Shauna caught me. She, I wasn't going to do it, but she went right there. And so I'm sorry. Come on back. So, and the Bible says Paul goes down here. He begins to preach. He begins to teach. And what we love about it is while he preaches and he teaches, the Bible says, and the people respond to his teaching. And one of them happened to be Lydia. All right, this one is, if you're writing something down, write this down. There is always going to be a response of confirmation to assignments. 
You cannot talk about you have an assignment that you're working and being led for if there never is a response of confirmation. It may not be immediate, but there has to be a response of confirmation. How do you know you're doing it right unless there's some confirmation? Don't act like y'all ain't never been driving somewhere and didn't quite know where you were and thought you knew and you were still nervous but following GPS with some doubts. Wondering, is this the right way? Is this the right place? I don't know. It didn't look like this. It was nighttime when I came. You know, I wasn't driving that time, so I didn't really pay attention. This time, oh, oh, dad, okay, we, we on the right path now. I see a sign. I remember, I remember. Yep, they had a McDonald's, and it was, and it was, the, the arch was half lit. Mm-hmm. There it is. Are we on the right path now. We, this is right. Some type of confirmation that they're moving forward. And the Bible says that, uh, that Lydia is a responding individual to this particular teaching of Paul. Now, what's so amazing, I got to hurry up, is that the Bible refers to her as a seller of purple. That is intentional, Brother Billy, because they are letting it be known she was a businesswoman. They're letting you know she's a person of means. They could have just said she was Lydia of Thyatira. They said, no, she's a seller of purple. That was customary for people to dye things in purple. Somebody had to manufacture the purple dye and sell it. And those who sold it would get paid because folk wanted to have purple stuff. So the fact that she's a seller of purple lets it be known she's got some business acumen. She, she knows what she's talking about. And why is that important? Because God is trying to show some of us that even with our simple direct message that Christ is the answer, folk of influence yet need to be persuaded. And the Bible lets us know that she's a person of means. She becomes, she, she listens, she heeds what's taught, and then she is baptized. She and her household. Her household, that means she's head of home. She's a single woman, but she's calling the shots. I thought some single mothers would get happy and say amen right there. All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, she's calling the shots. She's a business owner. She is doing some stuff. She doesn't say come to our house. She says come to my house. And the Bible says that they go to her house because why? They are, I, I like how one, one writer says this, the acceptance of her invitation to the home is a way of validating two things, that the, that the, that the apostles believe she's really been transformed. All right, all right. But also her declaration is, come to my house and see that what I've been saying amen to at the riverside is impacting in my house. Some of y'all missed that because some of us, we don't want nobody to come home with us because what how we act in the church is not how we act in the Lord. All right, let me move. And so, but, but, but what I love so much about Lydia is this come her house that is all baptized. She is a person of means. She becomes one of the foundational pillars of the church of Philippi. And she becomes a great financial supporter of what she believes in. Woohoo! Lord have mercy. If you believe in something, you need to make sure you support it 